my channel. I am so excited to be doing yet another tutorial using the Sultry palette from ABH. I know I just did a tutorial using the more darker shades in this palette, the black, gray, and silver, but I wanted to do more of a wearable smoky eye for you guys because I know a lot of people do not like to put black and bright silver on their eyelid. It's just, it's too much. Or if they just don't like wearing that dark of eyeshadow, which is fine because a long time ago I didn't either, but I'm trying to get more outside my comfort zone for you guys. But I know a lot of people would want more of a wearable smoky eye. So I decided to go more into the browns in this palette today. And I'm just so excited for you guys to see this tutorial. So if you are interested in seeing this makeup look, then just keep watching. So I already primed and set my eyelids with these two products. And I will have them listed down below for you. But the next product I'm going to go in with is of course this palette, which I said in the intro. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette, the palette that I have been die hard for. This is just such a beautiful everyday palette. I'm going to go into this shade first, and it's called Twig. It is just a light brown taupey color. It is perfect for the transition shade. So I'm just going to be putting that all over my eyes, in my crease, above my crease. My dog's name is Twix, like the candy bar, but whenever I say it apparently too fast to somebody like, oh, what's your dog's name? I say Twix. And they're like, oh, Twigs. And I'm like, no, like Twix, like the candy bar. So I just think this is so funny that this eyeshadow's name is Twig. But it's so pretty. And if I had to create an eyeshadow, I probably do something very similar to this shade just because it reminds me of my dog. It tends to have some fallout but it really isn't that bad compared to the other ABH palettes. I think they really upgraded their formula when they did this palette. Alright now to put in the outer V I'm going to go into this dark brown shade right here. It's called Dystopian. I think that is how it's pronounced and it's just a matte dark brown. I'm going to be putting this on my outer V and somewhat blending it into my crease. I cannot get over how pigmented these eyeshadows are. They are just so pigmented and they blend so good on the eyelids. If you have not tried out this eyeshadow palette, you really need to. I just think it is a step up from their regular eyeshadow formula and also it's, I think, limited edition. Like, I'm pretty sure this is their holiday collection palette. This is such a staple in my makeup collection now. I have to use it every other day. It's insane of how much I'm going into it all the time now. I think I got this on the Sephora 20% off sale or Rouge sale, something like that. And I was really debating to even get it. The only reason I did get it is because I have every single one of the ABH palettes. And I thought it would just add some value to my makeup collection. But I'm going back into Twig right here. And I'm kind of just gambling the edges with that. Now I'm going to wet my brush and go into the shade, I think it's pronounced teak, but it is a nice bronzy color. It's like a metallic foiled finish and I'm going to be putting this all over my lid. Now I'm going back into the shade Dystopian, and I'm going to kind of just be blending the two shades together on the middle of my eyelid, and also just packing on more of that color on my outer V. And I'm just doing this to the outer V, just blending those two shades together so it's a nice blend. I don't want to do it to kind of this cut crease going on here because I like how that looks. And I'm just going to do the same thing again. Just go back into Teak and amplify the lid shade. Alright, moving on to the face now. I'm going to be using this primer. It is the Dr. Briette Pores No More Pore Refining Primer. And I love this primer. I used to use it like every single day. It was just my go-to primer. And it still is, especially if I am trying out a new foundation. And, I mean, the foundation I'm using is new, but it's not new at the same time. But let me explain. So, I have the Revlon Colorstay in the shade 
250 fresh beige this is very 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 old so I thought I would get a replacement this is also the normal to dry skin and I was at Walmart the other day so I decided to pick up the Revlon color stay for oily skin I bought it like four years ago it doesn't even have a pump it's probably expired which is why I picked up a new one and it also comes with a pump so I was pretty excited about that but this is the foundation that I'm going to be using today. I'm pretty interested to see, like, is it a more matte foundation? Because my old one is normal to dry. And at Walmart, that said, it's more of a natural finish. And then the combination to oily foundation is more of a matte finish. I'm actually tanning a little bit at the moment, so I probably could have even went up one shade because Nebraska is going through winter right now, which is, hasn't been a very bad winter, but it's still really, really cold. Like right now it's about 10 degrees outside, which is freezing to me. And also our heater stopped working. So our house is freezing as well. So I kind of just like bundled up in a hoodie. I don't tan for that long. I just tan basically to get some warmth and just maybe a little bit more color because I am like 50 shades of white right now and none of my foundations match me. They're all too dark because normally I'm pretty well tanned and I'm also going through a slight cold right now so my nose is like all sore and sometimes my throat hurts just from like all the congestion. That was actually pretty good coverage that was about one layer and I'm okay with doing like one layer because if it's like medium to full coverage one layer is plenty if it is more of a sheer foundation I will go in with a couple layers I really think that like this coverage for right now is just fine but for concealer this isn't even around anymore it's the covergirl ready set gorgeous in the shade fair I think covergirl does have the best foundations I'm using the Airspun Loose Face Powder to set my foundation. So the product that I just got in the mail today, and I'm so excited to use it, it is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. Now this is the palette that has refillable pans, so I got to customize my shades in here. This is what the inside of mine looks like, and I'm so excited to use it. These two are in the shade Soleil. These are in the shade Lucid. This shade right here is Vanilla, and this shade right here is Shadow Play. I really recommend doing this instead of her original palette, because her original palette that doesn't have the refillable pans, they're just not versatile enough, because I hear people saying all the time like, oh, I can only use these two, or these two, or these two in their original palette. They're like, the other four shades are just way too dark for me or too light. So I highly, highly recommend if you're thinking about getting this palette, just get the refillable pans. That way you can customize it. And I know that Kat Von D just came out with the two pan palettes. Like, so it only have these two or it only have these two or these two that's in the original palette. But even those, those are about 20 I think they're $22. So let me just, let me do the math here for you guys real quick. At $22, and there is three different shades, so 22 times 3, that's $66. And this is only $49, which is kind of insane to me. It'd be much better price if you just got the refillable palette because you get a whole lot more shades. So I'm going to be using the shade Lucid underneath my eyes to kind of just highlight. And I have never used this formula before. This is the first time I'm even trying out her contour palette. I never bought the original one and I never just bought the individual pans, but I really do like that shade Lucid. That just brightened up my under eyes, if you can tell. Now to contour, I'm going to go into this one right here and it's called Soleil. I am really glad that she came out with the two pan palettes though because I know a lot of people don't like big palettes like this. They just want something small and simple. That's pretty much how a lot of my friends are but you know I just gotta be extra and get the big palette. But I really liked how that contoured my face. I think it just gave me a nice natural bronze. Now for blush. I'm gonna be using this CoverGirl Peach Punch Blush. I don't think I've ever used this blush yet. 
but I wanted to give it a shot because I'm looking more into drugstore blushes. I actually have a lot of drugstore blushes, but I just don't use blush that often. But this just looked like a very good drugstore blush, so I wanted to try it out for you guys today. Now for my highlighting, I'm going to be using the Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette. I'm going to be taking this shade right here. It's just a nude tone. I think it goes perfect with my skin tone. And I have been obsessed with this palette lately. It seriously just makes your cheeks look so wet. I'm obsessed with this palette. It's so good. Now I'm going back into the shade Twig. And I'm going to be putting this all along my lower lash line. I do kind of have to pat these eyeshadows along my lower lash line. Because there's so much dust flying and it makes my eyes water. So I kind of have to like pack this shade on. Then I'm going to go into Dystopian. And I'm going to be putting this on my lower lash line. But from my pupils outwards. Kind of just mimic my lid. Then I'm going to be taking the shade Fresh and I'm going to be using that as my brow bone highlight. And then the shade Pearl for my inner corner highlight. This shade is bomb. It is just so freaking pigmented. All right, and I'm going to go pop on some mascara. I don't want to do falsies today. I want this to be more of a wearable look for you guys. So I think I'm just going to go into mascara and I will be right back. All right, and this is a finished look for my lip products. I went into the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in Strip. And then on top of that, I put the ColourPop Ultra Gloss Lip in the shade Fairy Floss to kind of just nude it down. I felt like the shade Strip was just a little too red tone, so I wanted to kind of nude it down with Fairy Floss. And I love this look. I think it is much more wearable smoky eye than my black and silver smoky eye. But I definitely love both looks. I wanted to do something for you guys that was on the more wearable side for this palette. You can do so many beautiful looks with this palette. I just, I love using this palette and I know I have been mentioning a lot on my channel. But I think it is totally worth it. And I think you guys should go pick it up if you do not have this palette in your life. But yeah, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and subscribe down below for me. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye!